Joint diseases today are not only found in older people, but also young men and women. And our nutrition is one of the most important factors that affect the health of our joints. Our joints, cartilage, and ligaments are very complex anatomical entities, and they need proper care and attention throughout our lives. And after the age of 50, most people already have joint disease. In this video, we've gathered those foods that are bad for our joints and that we need to eliminate from our diet. If you already have pain, you need to do it urgently. But if you don't have pain yet, you need to be aware of it for prevention purposes, so that it doesn't come sometime in the future. So watch this video to the end, it's going to be very interesting and useful. Let's get started. By the way, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell. Do not miss our new videos. So the first item is phosphates and any foods that are rich in them. What are phosphates? It's a salt of phosphoric acid. Our body also needs a small amount of phosphate to support its natural processes. But everything is good in moderation. The fact is that in very large quantities, phosphate begins to upset our calcium balance, and to somehow replenish that balance, the body does what? Take calcium from our bones. Hence, osteoporosis, dental problems, decreased density of our cartilage tissue, and so on down the list. So we need to pay attention to how much phosphate we eat. What's the first thing we need to eliminate? That is processed meats. This would include various sausages, that is processed meat. Not natural real meat, but factory processed. The fact is that by eating sausage, we can very easily exceed our body's daily requirement of phosphates. And as additional side effects, we can get a slower metabolism, which can cause us to gain extra weight. We can also get apathy and a disruption of our cardiovascular system. I've talked a lot about the dangers of processed meat on this channel. It is highly advisable to give up processed meat in favor of real one. Moreover, phosphates are not only found in processed meat, but also in other foods. Which ones are that? Crab sticks, for example. If you think crab sticks are made from crab meat, I have to disappoint you. Also, there are a lot of phosphates in processed cheese. By the way, processed cheese, unlike normal real quality cheese, is also an unhealthy alternative. This also includes a variety of sauces, chips, canned foods, carbonated drinks, and many convenience foods. These foods need to be excluded from our diet to keep our joints, cartilage, and ligaments healthy. And they also affect the cardiovascular system the permanent processes of microinflammation, and so on. So even if your knees don't hurt, it's still better not to eat them. The next point is various pickles and smoked foods. Of course, if we are talking about healthy eating, in any healthy diet, this is a taboo. And we all know that smoked fish and pickled mushrooms, if we eat them a lot, can very quickly turn into abdominal pain. But the problems are not the end of the gastrointestinal disorder, because our joints are suffering just as much. And there's more than one reason. First, it's the same phosphates. And second, these foods contain excessive amounts of salt. There is still a debate. Is salt harmful or useful? But the answer is, salt is necessary within reasonable limits. It is from 2 to 5 grams of salt per day. That's about one tenth of an ounce. Less than 2 grams is bad, and more than 5 is also bad. But whenever we consume a variety of smoked meats and pickles, we can exceed our daily salt requirements by a factor of 2 with just one meal. What does that lead to? Our joints will lose flexibility, swelling will develop, and over time they will become less and less mobile. Also, if we gain weight as a result of such a diet, it leads to even more strain on the musculoskeletal system. The next point is tea and coffee, but here again, we must make a reservation. Within reasonable limits, tea and coffee will be more useful than harmful. But what is a reasonable limit? Here begins the nuances and the individual characteristics of the body. T 
Tea and coffee contain a lot of purines. These are the chemicals that play a very large role in the formation of our DNA molecules. And if we are severely deficient in purines, it will lead to major health problems. The same can be said about the excess consumption of purines. So it's the same with purines as it is with salt. You need a middle ground. If we drink too much tea and coffee, 5 cups a day for example, then, as a consequence, our uric acid levels in the body are very high. And then its crystals begin to settle on the cartilage and vascular membranes, and as a consequence, this can lead to gout. If you drink a cup of coffee or a couple of cups of tea a day and feel fine and your joints do not hurt, then you do not need to change anything. But if you have joint problems and you do drink a lot of tea or coffee during the day, it's time to think about reducing your intake. It should also be said that besides coffee and tea, purines are also found in other foods. These are fish, especially oily ones. These are legumes, although that's not a reason to give up legumes and fatty fish completely because these are healthy foods. Again, if you indicate that. There are also a lot of purines in soda, mushrooms, spicy and smoked foods, and chocolate. Sorrel. Is sorrel such a bad food? Actually, no. Sorrel is healthy. It's a very good herb. It has a good dose of magnesium, vitamin B6, and iron. And generally, no nutritionist will say that sorrel is bad. If we eat sorrel fresh, then everything is great. But if we heat treat it, that is, fry, stew, steam, or bake, then the oxalic acid begins to react with calcium. This creates an inorganic salt which is very difficult for our body to absorb, and it can begin to settle, for example, in the form of kidney stones. And then inflammation can occur, including in our joints. So it is not necessary to stop eating sorrel. But if you eat it in its heat-treated form, then you should think about it. It's better to eat fresh sorrel than cooked, especially if you already have joint problems. Sweets and pastries. Many people talk about the harm of sugar, and on my channel, I've also said many times that sugar is the main pro-inflammatory factor in our diet. Sugar provokes permanent micro-inflammations, including those in our joints. Also, sugar disrupts collagen synthesis and contributes to its destruction. And collagen is the main building material of our connective tissue, which means our skin as well as cartilage and tendons. So sugar is the enemy of our joints. But why did I particularly highlight baked goods in this paragraph as well? Because baked goods are sugar plus yeast. If we eat sugar and yeast together, we get a massive dose of the same purines, which in turn provoke gout. That's why nutritionists recommend giving up these confectionery products, various sweet rolls, and so on. If you have a problem with the joints, then you should think about it even more seriously. By the way, write in the comments, which of these do you eat? Or maybe you refuse something from this list. Share your opinions or experiences, it would be interesting. And now I highly recommend you to watch my other video, where I talk about foods that age us. This video is a great addition to what I was talking about here, because the joint disease is directly related to the aging process. It's very useful information. The link to the video just appeared on the screen, and the link is also in the description. And I have also pinned it in the top comment. Be sure to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you at the video about foods that age us. Take care.